Without any further ado, would you give him a warm welcome to Father Stephen Hughes. He's not really a father. We're just confused. By <laughs> I did it, didn't I? Yeah, that's okay. We'll see if the Lord's listening. Yeah, that's right. Um, thank you for the invitation to uh, to come here tonight. And um, already I discovered that there's one man here who's actually seen the shroud, and there's another man here who has more chemistry on his tie than I've ever studied. So this could be a a, a difficult evening, but we'll. Hope for contributions, uh, so I thank you. Um, I'm a, a, just a, an amateur uh, interested in this amazing phenomenon of uh, the shroud, which I discovered uh, in my uh, former life. I was a Presbyterian minister. When I was in seminary uh, at Princeton, I discovered the Holy Shroud, which I had never heard of. Um, and... Uh, as soon as I looked at the picture, I felt like this was the face of Christ, and I couldn't explain it. And so, over the years, I began to follow this, and this was around the time the Stroke team first began to study scientifically the Shroud, back in uh, 1976, 78, and there. So, what I've done is put together uh, things that are pretty much accessible to everybody, um, but from several different directions, because... As, as I've watched this, iconography, astronomy, uh, different kinds of things have all contributed to it. Um, it's really interesting that we're having this tonight because of uh, the, the shroud being on view and the Pope making comments about it. And I've even got now a shroud on my app, an app on my phone of it. And it has almost everything that and more that I'll say tonight about some about the science behind it. Um, it's... Uh, very interesting. Um, so, let me uh, try to take us through here, um, and we'll see what we can discover. The church historian, uh, Bishop Eusebius, early in the 4th century, translated a letter from Syriac documents of a 1st century king of Edessa named Apgar. And this document tells of a disciple named Thaddeus, who was a Hebrew born in the Syrian city of Edessa, who spread the gospel throughout Syria. And he's responsible for converting King Apgar of Edessa to Christianity. Thaddeus brought to the city of Edessa a cloth on which the image of Jesus' actual facial features appeared, and the king was miraculously healed when he received it. Now, Bishop Eusebius is very insistent on the history of of a vibrant Christianity in Edessa that dates back to the first century. Evagrius Scholasticus in his Ecclesiastical History 200 years later in the sixth century mentions that the city of Edessa was protected by a divinely wrought portrait, an image not made with human hands that had been sent to Jesus by King Apgar. The image not made with human hands, also known as the mandilion, or, or literally the little towel, is an icon in the Orthodox Church that depicts the face of Christ on a cloth. Why would such an, an image exist? One of the members of the team of physicists that studied the shroud in 1978, John Jackson, used a special type of light photography, and he confirmed that the ancient fold marks on the shroud show that it was folded up in such a way that only the face would have been seen on the top. So it may well have existed stored this way for many, many years. And this has been confirmed. Second reason would be that uh, in Jewish law, uh, an image like this would be forbidden. And a cloth with the image of a dead man with blood on it would be ritually defiling in Judaism, so it would be a kind of apostasy. So it would have been something that they would not have kept had it just been within Judaism. The early images of Christ from the first centuries were symbols like the fish. The word fish, ichthys, in Greek is an acrostic for you. Jesus Christos Theos Weos Soter. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. 
And by virtue of the stories of the five loaves and the two fish, the apostles as fishers of men, the fish quickly became a symbol among Christians, and it's remained so until our time. So this is one of the symbols from the catacombs under Rome and Italy. Christians buried uh, their dead in underground tunnels that were dug out of volcanic pumice near the city of Rome. The San Calistos catacombs are the largest, and they were at one time the principal Christian cemetery in Rome. I visited there in 1976, and there were some 15 miles of these tunnels. You could easily get lost and die in them if you couldn't find your way out. But in these uh, tunnels, there are images, and they all follow the same type. This is one from 250 A.D., the Good Shepherd. Here's another one from the Catacomb of Priscilla. Still the same kind of Greco-Roman uh, male, uh, no different than other cultural pictures of that period. Now this is in, at Dura Europus. This is a picture of Jesus healing the paralytic. This wall painting is the earliest known representation of Christ, dating from 235 AD. It was found in 1921 on the left-hand wall of a baptismal chamber of a house church along the Euphrates River in modern Syria. It's now a part of a collection at Yale University. And it depicts... Jesus as a type of teacher. He's wearing a tunic and Roman clothing and sandals, and he has close-cropped close hair, and his face is a very youthful, distinguished intellectual. Now this one is from the Domitilla Catacombs. This is the Good Shepherd again. We're, now it's 350 A.D., so we're 300 years post um, the... Uh, life and, and uh, event of, of Jesus, and the pictures are still Roman-esque uh, Greco forms. What's unusual and significant for our consideration is how iconography representations move away from the Greco-Roman shepherd boy to images like the shroud. This fresco was discovered in 1905 in the catacombs of Comodila, and it's reputedly the earliest known representation of Christ with a beard. So we're at 450 now. Um, this is, uh, was discovered where the martyrs of the persecution of Emperor Diocletian were buried in this. And now the most famous one, the icon of the Pantocrator at St. Catherine's of Sinai, uh, one of the only monasteries, uh, ancient ones, that hasn't been destroyed. It's perhaps the most dramatic and the earliest example of an icon known uh, as Christ Pantocrator. Um, now, this was 550 A.D., so what happened to shift the image from the Greco-Roman pictures of the shepherd boy to this powerful image. And this is an extremely uh, powerful theological image. If you, if you look at this image, you know, we know now from the brain how the left side of the brain uh, controls the right side of the body, and the right side of the brain controls the left, and there's something called the corpus callosum, a bundle of fibers that allows the brain to communicate. And by the way, women have 10 to 33 percent more nerve fibers in the corpus callosum than men. So we're much more half-brainers. And the women are thinking more holistically and relationally. That's why when they start to say things to us about what they're feeling and we say, well, you need to do this, we're just not listening but halfway. So we've got to work on that. Well, that's, neuro, that's neurological things that weren't known back then. And if you look at the face and you put up, if you cover up the face of persons, and you, by photography, make the left side of the face appear on the right so that you have two sides that look like your left, and you do the same with the right, the person doesn't even look the same. They look like they might be brothers or something, or sisters. 
So look at the left eye and the right eye. If I could reach up here, I can't do that from here now, but if I covered this up, how many of you would want to go to confession with this man? Look at that eye. Yeah. If I cover this, how many would want to go to confession with this man? Well, we have many ways to think of this. We have the theanthropos, we have the divinity and the humanity, we have the mercy and the judgment. So the theological understanding of the church's life was already emerging in the icon uh, deeply, and without realizing it, they were also giving us um, an understanding that we're only starting to pick up with an understanding of the brain and of the two sides of the human face. And it's an image of extraordinary power and life. How did, how did this happen? 550 A.D. Well, guess what happened in 544 A.D.? About six years earlier, in the reign of Emperor Justinian, a special um, a cloth bearing an image of Jesus was found in a protected portion above a gate. Guess where? Edessa, where King Abgar was. Now, this happens historically. There's traces of this that are extant. We don't have a complete picture of this, but this image what came up historically. Very interesting. If it's the same image that was brought to King Apgar, suddenly, six years later, in the reign of Justinian, you have this appearance. Now, another peculiarity about the shroud, it's very faint on the left. You're used to seeing, probably when you see it, the one that's darker and looks much more vivid and real. Well, that's, you know, the image of Segundo Pia who found out that when he took a picture of the shroud, the negative of the photograph was actually a positive. So if someone had been trying to fake it, photography wasn't even known about, so that's a peculiarity that they would never have done something like that that wasn't a, uh, an actual face. So you can see it, but it doesn't look, you know, as natural as it will when you see the negative. But when you look at the um, markings on the face, suddenly icons of Christ start having the same kind of markings. Some comparisons suggest uh, facial features that are very close. Now you're looking at the negative imposed on it. So this is the negative of the shroud and the, the comparison there. And now again comparing them where it's an overlay of it. So someone uh, got the idea that uh, they would look at all the different icons and compare what features of the face of Christ are similar. And there's about 17, and then they start looking at the shroud and finding these connections. So in the 6th century, all of a sudden, not only do we have this, but we have coins that have the face of Christ. One of my military students surprised me one day he had been deployed to Turkey and he sent me a coin from the 6th century and you can see on this I'll pass it around from the Byzantine Empire that has the face of Christ on one side and King of Kings on the other I still am always interested to hold something so old in my hands um, so this is uh, then the money began to show the this image, and there are no more images of the Greco-Roman shepherd boy. 